Hello and welcome. Uh, this is Camille Fairborn from Michigan State University. I'd like to welcome you to today's teaching and learning webinar. Today we're pleased to be joined by Dr. Ellen Perkman, who is a professor at Wake Forest University, and Dr. Ricky Blair, who is a professor emeritus from Lakeland Community College. For today's webinar, they will give a presentation entitled The CBMS Survey, Measuring Characteristics and Dynamics of Undergraduate Mathematical and Statistical Sciences Programs. As you can see, we're now using Zoom as our webinar platform for this series. And as usual, this webinar is being recorded and the recording will be made available on the CAUSE website and YouTube channel. All listeners will be muted throughout the webinar. At the bottom of your screen, you will see both a Q&A option and a chat option. Please type any questions you have for the presenters into the Q&A box, and we will ask those questions to the presenters at the end of the presentation. If you're having any technical difficulties, please use the chat box to communicate with the webinar organizers. At this point, I'll turn things over to our presenters. Ellen, go ahead. So thank you very much. We really appreciate uh, CAUSE giving us this chance to talk about our survey. So as noted, uh, talking today, so I'm Ellen Kirkman here in the middle. I'm the survey director of the last three surveys. Um, on my right is, Rick, on my left actually is Ricky Blair, who's Emerita at Lakeland Community College. She has been in charge of the uh, two-year college survey the last three cycles. And the picture on the right is of Dennis Pearl, who un was planning to be here, but unfortunately at the last minute was unable to come. He's at Penn State University, and he headed up our statistics committee for the coming uh, 2021 survey. I'd like to thank uh, Thomas Blair, who is director of programs at the American Math Society. So he was very involved in helping us put together these slides. So every five years since 1965, with the support of an NSF grant that's been administered by the American Math Society, a survey of undergraduate mathematics and statistics program directed by a committee appointed by the Conference Board of the Mathematical Sciences, that's CBMS, which is an umbrella organization of 19 uh, professional organizations in the mathematical sciences, appoints a committee. And the survey is conducted by a contractor. In the last three years, it's been Westat Incorporated. So we design three instruments each cycle. So one is for mathematics departments in two-year public uh, community colleges. Another is for mathematics departments at four-year colleges and universities. And the third is for uh, graduate statistics program that also have an undergraduate program. So those are the three instruments. And we note that um, the American Math Society conducts an annual survey yearly of the four-year math and staff departments, and they collect information about total enrollments and faculty each year. But a unique feature of this particular survey is that it includes the two-year colleges, uh, which, as we'll see, contribute a significant enrollment in mathematics and statistics. And there is no such annual survey of the two-year colleges like there is for the four-year colleges. So the survey is done using a stratified random sample. And the survey gathers data, including, it's a lot of data, but it includes course by course enrollments, uh, another unique feature of the survey. So we look at numbers of faculty and their demographics. That includes their employment status, like if they're tenure track, part-time, their gender, et cetera. We look at the number of undergraduate degrees enrolled awarded during the past academic year. We also look at various features of the undergraduate program and special topics that change from cycle to cycle. The re reports are printed in hard copy like the one you see on the slide at the right. And they're also available online at this link. Um, and so you can go back to the ones from 1970 on can be found at this link off of the American Math Society webpage. 
So today, we want to pique your interest in these full reports by pre presenting some highlights from first, a short survey that we refer to as the COVID survey that was conducted in the fall of 2020 when we realized the usual survey was not appropriate for that unusual semester. And then secondly, some uh, highlights from the 2015 survey. And we're trying to indicate some of the kinds of data that are collected. And then finally, some plans for the survey that will be conducted this fall in 2021 instead of 2020. So starting with the COVID survey, so this was data that was uh, collected October, November, 2020. It was a short, relatively short survey, six multiple choice questions. We asked for fall enrollments for 2019 and fall 2020, so we could compare. And then there were two free response questions. We asked about the greatest challenge that they were having and the greatest benefits they saw from the online and uh, different sorts of instruction that were occurring in the fall of 2020. So this, unlike um, our random sample, this effectively was a census of these institutions. Our response rate was not great. You can see it there, but we did get um, a good number of responses, particularly from the four-year math departments. And so we'll give you some idea of some of the uh, questions and what we learned. So this question was, based on your current plans for fall 2020, what proportion of your department's mathematical science sections are taught in the following formats? And so the following formats were a, a hybrid, a mixture of online and face-to-face, -face, or only face-to-face, -face, or online synchronously, or online asynchronously. And so in this uh, graph, you can see the, the totals. And so I should say we, uh, there were, four options. They could answer almost all were offered, more than half, uh, less than half, or almost none. And so in this particular graph, we're looking at uh, the percentage that answered almost all or more than half, and trying to, to get at what kind of the majority of the sections were offered in which of these formats. And as I think is pretty clear, there wasn't uh, a lot of variation between the three kinds of institutions. And it seems that uh, the most common format was online synchronously. So another question, well, this was about fall 2020 enrollments and fall 2019 enrollments. So we asked, what are the total fall enrollments in mathematics and statistics courses in your department for 2019 and 2020? So they entered their enrollments and then what we calculated was the percentage change. And we divided it into the five categories that you see, a decrease of at least 10%, a decrease of at least five, but less than 10%, uh, the middle one is basically no change, you know, between 5% increase or decrease, an increase of at least 5% and an increase of at least 10%. And so from this, you can see that the statistics department, they reported much less decrease and more increase enrollment than the other two kinds of departments. So then we looked at the future. So this question was, how has the experience of teaching online changed plans for teaching online in the future? So there were three questions and the responses were strongly agree, agree, undecided, disagree, strongly disagree and not applicable, <laughs> excuse me. And so uh, here we're only looking at uh, disagree strongly, disagree as one category and agree or strongly agree as another. And again, it's broken down by the four-year math, the statistics and the two-year math. And so the first of these questions is, we are considering offering a greater number of online courses. And in the two-year math and the statistics departments, there was much agreement with that, much more than in the four-year math. 
The next question was, we're considering offering a broader range of distance learning formats. And here, the statistics departments were in the middle of the four-year math and the, uh, and the two-year math departments. Again, more interest in online, uh, increased online teaching in the two-year than in the four-year institutions. And then the final question or statement to react to, additional faculty are showing an interest in participating in distance learning. And so here the statistics and uh, four-year math were about the same. And again, the two-year institutions were showing more interest, more agreement with the fact that, that the experience of teaching in fall 2020 was bringing more interest in distance learning. So I guess I'm up next for a few slides. And because I was a second presenter, I had the opportunity to look through the participant list. And I just want to say a shout out to some of my longtime friends I see on that list and uh, hope to see you in person sometime. But anyway, we'd like to turn our focus away from the COVID survey now to the um, more of the highlights of the 2015 CBMS survey that we want to share some uh, results up from and hope that you go to the website and take a look at it. It was conducted in October, no, uh, November uh, 2015. The sample was 518 institutions, 222 two-year institutions, and 296 um, uh, four-year institutions and statistics programs. Um, as Ellen said, we, there were three questionnaires that went out and we wanna share some of the sampling of the findings in the next slides and others. Starting out with enrollments, enrollments are a big part of the CBMS survey reports. And here's the graph of the mathematical sciences enrollments that includes the statistics enrollments as well. And you see the longitudinal information about the enrollments. Uh, showing a particular increase in uh, mathematical sciences from 2005 on and then four-year institutions. Two-year colleges, we were, we were going up and then we had a, a downtick from 10 to 2015. That's not unusual um, with an uptick in the economy. And also there were changes during that time in state regulations and uh, policies about teaching developmental mathematics. So from 10 to 15, we noticed a, a decrease in enrollments in developmental mathematics. And I think that's showing in the overall math enrollments. So moving on, because I'm from the two-year college, I wanna highlight this um, so much post-secondary mathematics education goes on at the two-year college. In 2015, it was 41% of all post-secondary mathematics enrollments. In 2010, it was actually 57, again, 57%. And um, that's, again, aligning with the previous data that we saw that um, enrollments were down. And again, it's pretty much in the developmental math area. We did want to highlight enrollments in statistics uh, for this audience here today. And on this graph, you can see uh, enrollments in STAT, which is the turquoise two-year college green and uh, four-year math of brownish and um, steady increase all along the way since 2000. And in particular, out of the 737,000 uh, students enrolled in statistics across the board here, 42% uh, were at the four-year colleges, 20% uh, in statistics departments, and 38% in the two-year colleges. A special note to me and my two-year college co colleagues is that increase in statistics at the two-year college. It was up 104%, and that would, um, was really 143,000 more students in statistics at the two-year college. So statistics is big, and that's one of the reasons why we're here with you today. <clears throat> um, as Ellen showed earlier, other things that come up in the CBMS surveys are special topics. And in 2015, we started to ask some questions about pathways. Many of you on um, our webinar today are probably very familiar with Statway, which was really the first pathways uh, course or course sequence uh, developed by the Carnegie Foundation back in 2009. The whole idea was to create a course or a course sequence 
the, where students could complete a college level math or statistics course aligned with their academic career in one year. So that took a redesign of some of the developmental mathematics courses, as well as some of the college level courses. So specifically to the two-year colleges in 2015, we asked more questions than they did in the four-year college questionnaire. So we wanted to know what was the percentage or how many colleges were actually implementing pathways course sequences. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I'm gonna have to take a drink here. That gave you a break to read the slide so that um, you can see that 58% um, of the responding two-year colleges actually implemented a pathways course sequence of some sort. The ones that we asked about um, in, the, in 2015 were foundations, which is a redesign of developmental mathematics, QR or QL, statistics, and then there were some others which we really didn't ask what they were. But note the big percentage of the implementation of statistics pathways at two-year colleges with, a, with over 56,000 students. So another part, as we um, Ellen mentioned before, of the survey is information about faculty. This is just one of many uh, slides. Of, this one's about the two-year college faculty. Uh, Ellen's going to share some about the four-year college faculty. And again, everything kind of aligns with the data. You can see that in 2015, uh, full-time and part-time faculty at two-year colleges was lesser than in 2010. And that goes along with the enrollment data that we saw before. But in the, in the document, there's a lot more information about gender, diversity, um, how many um, sections are taught by part-time and full-time. There's a lot more information in the um, total document. We're just trying to give you a, a snippet of what you can find there. So as I mentioned, one of the unique features of the uh, CBMS surveys is we look at course by course enrollments. And so we can compare enrollments um, in undergraduate statistics courses that are taught in mathematics departments and the enrollments in those same courses or the, with the least same title that are taught in statistics department. And we can look at it longitudinally. So here I've just, uh, as an example, selected four different courses. So the first course, mathematical statistics. So we note that it has larger enrollment in mathematics departments than in statistics departments. And in mathematics departments, it's a larger part of its statistics course enrollment than it is in statistics department. Probability. So about three times the enrollments in math departments than in statistics departments. So then a, a course that in 2015 we called regression slash correlation and another course we called statistical software slash computing. So enrollment growth in, in both mathematics departments and statistics departments in these areas, but uh, it's closer to the enrollment of other courses in statistics departments than it is in mathematics departments. So I note that the list of statistics courses has been changing and the labels we use for these courses was perhaps the biggest issue that the statistics part of our uh, 2000 and, uh, 21 committee discussed. So as I mentioned, regression correlation is gone as a descriptor in 2021, but we have courses that we're titling design and analysis of experiments. Another one applied regression, another linear models one, another linear models two. So the titles of these courses change as the enrollments and uh, we'll again be comparing the enrollments in math departments that have a that are offering them in stat departments. So although enrollments in math and stat courses have been generally increasing, the number of bachelor's degree awarded had been relatively stable from 1995 to 2010, maybe even declining slightly. Uh, but there were an estimated 26,234 awarded by four-year math and stat departments in 2015. So th that was a 23% increase, actually 1.9 standard errors. 
in 2015 over 2010. Uh, so the number of degrees did seem to go up. The de bachelor's degrees awarded by math and STEM departments where it had been relatively uh, relatively stable preceding. And also we look at things like the gender breakdown of these degrees, which has been relatively stable. It was 42% women in 2015. So although four-year math departments have significant enrollments in statistics courses, they have not been reporting a large number of minors or bachelor's degrees awarded in statistics. So as in this table, most of the uh, four-year data collected is broken down by the highest degree offered by these institutions. So PhD, that column means I'm looking at institutions that the highest degree they award is a PhD. Uh, the master's column, that's the highest degree they award is a, a master's degree. And the BA, that's the highest degree they award is a bachelor's degree. So these are three different kinds of four-year math departments. And you can see the percentage of those that reported offering a minor in statistics, uh, the largest being the master's degrees. So overall, 16% of four-year mathematics departments said they offered a minor in statistics. And as I said, this has been broken down by the highest degree awarded by the department. The number of minors awarded, though, in the uh, reported awarded in the 2014 and 15 academic year was relatively small. And you can see those numbers. So we also see the number of bachelor's degrees in statistics awarded by four year math departments. Again, math, they awarded, math departments awarded a lot of degrees, uh, 24,387 bachelor's degrees were, con were confirmed 2014 to 2015. Um, but there were a total of only 416 that they reported were offered in statistics. And again, these are broken down by the kind of department and it's pretty equally across all three kinds of departments. So the CPMS surveys look at total numbers of faculties and there are many, there's a whole chapter on uh, faculty demographics. This is one. Um, here we see the total number of faculty in four-year mathematics and statistics departments. And we see that the number of faculty in statistics department increased more from 2010 to 2015 than the number of faculty in mathematics departments. So as I also noted earlier, we look at their employment status. So we do this for both mathematics and st uh, statistics. Here I've got just the breakdown for four-year statistics departments. And this is again, longitudinal over time. So we look at four different kinds of faculty. They're the tenured faculty, then they're the tenure eligible or tenure track faculty. And then the group that has been expanding the most in both mathematics departments and statistics department is what we call other full-time OFT faculty. So these are full-time faculty, but they're not tenured or tenure eligible. So they have uh, job titles such as professor of the practice or teaching professor, something like this, a postdoc or visiting instructor. And so both in the statistics departments and in the math departments, this has been the growth biggest, we've seen the biggest percentage growth in this type of faculty. So an, an issue that I think has been of concern to uh, the statistics community is, as, as I said, there's lots of enrollment in statistics in four-year math departments, but they've wondered about the qualifications of the people teaching those courses. So this is looking at uh, the faculty at four-year math and stat departments who are teaching an elementary statistics course. And it's, again, um, broken down by the kind of department. So by row, the, uh, the highest degree offered is a PhD. This, the next row, the highest degree offered is a master's. The last row is, or the second to the last row, the highest degree these institutions offer is a BA. And then at the bottom is the total. And so the columns, so none means that the instructor has no graduate degree in statistics. 
Uh, the next column says they have a they have an MA in statistics, but not a PhD. And then the rightmost column is that they have a PhD. And so you can see that, again, it's not too different uh, across the different kinds of uh, four-year math departments. And in most cases, in 64% of the cases, uh, the instructor had uh, no graduate degree in statistics. So looking ahead to the 2021 sur survey, as we mentioned before, each time we do this survey, we look for topics of opportunity, things that are relevant to the mathematics community at this time, and try to include some questions and some conversation about it. This often leads to more questions than next time, like in Pathways this last time. So as you can see, we're interested this time in equity diversity. Our statistics subcommittee um, developed a couple questions, one about instructional strategies and technology uses in introductory statistics. Of course, we're interested in uh, drilling down a little bit more into distance remote learning questions, building upon the COVID survey that we shared with you earlier, and then um, updated list of uh, statistics course names, but also all the course names. We'll be able to capture all the course names now in the new format. So look, next slide, please. So here is um, what we plan to offer in the question uh, relative to equity, diversity, and inclusion. We're really interested in assessing the extent to which activities have taken place in response to this national attention. What's happening in mathematics departments across the United States? We want to know about faculty, whether there are faculty and student discussions to increase awareness of these issues. We want to know if there's program or policy changes to affect the demographic balance of faculty and undergraduate and graduate students in math sciences. And then, of course, hopefully we'll find out about new programs that are um, working to encourage underrepresented groups in the mathematical sciences. Most of us, I think, on this list here today have been working on that for many years. So hopefully we can make more strides now. Um, in terms of the two questions for introductory statistics, here's the one on instructional strategies. What we're trying to assess is how often these are used, once a week, occasionally never, uh, conceptual understanding, real world applications, real data, active learning, using assessments. And um, the second uh, specific question for statistics about the use of technology, but specifically how successful it is with students and instructors in terms of exploring concepts, demonstrating con concepts, analyzing data, and solving problems. So we hope that these questions are going to pull some more information out for you and the rest of the math community. So this is the end of our slide. There's lots more information in all of the CBMS surveys that are available online and actually also in the COVID survey. There was a lot of free response uh, answers in the COVID survey. So the 2021 survey will be going out in October. Um, we're in the process of drawing the samples now. We hope that if you are a department chairman and you happen to receive the survey that you will certainly spend the time, it does take a little bit of time to complete the survey to uh, respond. We're looking really hard at different ways to encourage a better response rate, particularly in the two-year college environment where maybe staff is not available to help out. But anyway, we're looking forward to your response if you are one of the department chairs. So thanks for your participation for coming online today. We'd like to answer any questions that you might have and uh, that was the link to um, the, the website again. And uh, I don't know if that's in the chat room, but we can put it in there now. So thank you, first of all, to both of you for this presentation. I have put the link to your two websites into the chat window so people can access that. And we have one question, but if you have some other questions as, you're, as we're talking here, please go ahead and put those in the question and answer um, par portion of Zoom here. So Laura Bauman asked um, early on in the, the webinar about uh, 
if you had any more information or ideas about why the response rate was so low to your survey. And I think you kind of answered that, Ricky, in that it does take some time and probably some staff participation to help answer the survey. Do you have any other ideas about why that's happening? Well, I was watching the Q&A um, board when that question came in, and I think it was really asked during the COVID presentation. Um, I'm not sure if that's true, but uh, the COVID response rate, and Ellen may have a different opinion than, than me, you know, faculty were pretty busy. Um, <laughs> it was a tough time to try to do a survey. It was why we delayed doing the big survey um, in 2020 when it was due. Um, but so having this one go out in the midst of COVID, it was pretty tough, uh, I think, for, for fa faculty department chairs or whomever to take time away from their schedule, even to do a short survey. So we were appreciative of what we got. Ellen, do you have other comments? Yes. Yeah, so, so I would also, um, so our contractor, Westat, they, they usually on our big survey, they do more follow-up than we did this time. We, we felt like it was important to get it out you know, instead of spending several months. Um, and I think he, they also felt we were not likely to get more responses, but we did actually do less contacting afterwards to try to generate more responses. That makes a lot of sense. So another question from Lara, she says, I'm curious about the background of faculty teaching stats courses, wondering about degrees awarded from math departments, but coursework and research was in, what about degrees that are from math where their course and sorry, coursework and research was in statistics. And then she says also at her community college, you must have a math degree to teach in the math department. If you were teaching stat classes, is that similar at four-year schools? So I guess um, questions a little so, bit more about the background of the faculty. So, I mean, I think the data shows that, I mean, I, so we, we of course don't know about coursework and research or whatever, and, and somebody can be competent to teach a course and not have a degree in it. Um, but, but this has been something that uh, statisticians have wondered about, you know, what kind of credentials, uh, there's lots of enrollment. I mean, the enrollment in two-year college and four-year college stat courses is much larger undergraduate courses than in stat departments. And so, I mean, I think that's part of what cause is actually about trying to uh, see that, that people whose training is, you know, maybe more theoretical um, are actually teaching stat courses that are going to be useful in the in the future. That is what we're here for, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one last question, do you collect data about the ethnicity of these students with these degrees and do minority students have, have minority student numbers gone up with the totals? So so that is one thing that we're asked a lot about and we have not collected. We have, we've collected data about the uh, ethnicity of faculty, but not of students, because that a chair does not necessarily, I mean, the chair knows how many people are in this section of calculus, but they typically don't know things about the ethnic breakdown of those. Um, so there, there's a lot of interest in that, uh, but I would say, and we've talked about trying to collect it, but we always come down on, we're just not, we don't believe that the, the chairman actually knows those numbers. That makes sense. Sorry. Um, I think that's all the questions we've got today. Uh, again, we wanna thank you for presenting this. Lots of really good information and fun stuff to, to dive into. So um, thanks to all of you who've attended and uh, like I said before, this webinar will be up on the CauseWeb YouTube channel soon and hope that you'll share that with your colleagues. And again, have a, thanks again and have a really great day. Thanks to everyone. Thank you. Okay.